Yes, you can use a salvaged Tesla battery for off-grid power as long as you add a BMS. Keep watching and we'll show you how easy it is to install the Tesla BMS kit from Overkill Solar. This video covers both Revision B and Revision C Tesla modules. A BMS is an essential component of any lithium battery as it protects the lithium cells from overcharging or over discharging. Installing a BMS on a Tesla battery module will allow it to operate safely, extend its lifespan, and improve its overall performance. But wait, there are some risks to be aware of. Lithium ion cells have a high risk of fire which releases toxic fumes. Physical damage, heating, and overcharging can cause a runaway reaction and a fire that's impossible to extinguish. Used, recovered, recycled, or salvaged battery modules may have hidden damage that makes them more sensitive to further damage. Recycled lithium ion battery modules should be installed in a detached garage or shed. Avoid installing these batteries in a dwelling area. A single 24 volt Tesla module is unlikely to cause electric shocks. However, voltage over 48 volts can cause serious electric shocks, so take appropriate steps to avoid electric shocks if you plan to connect battery modules in series. Now we have access to remove the original Tesla BMS board. To do that, I'm going to start by pulling the center out of these plastic pins, then pull the body of the pin out. I'm going to pull all four pins out and set them aside. When you reassemble, you can use these pins again, or you can use the stainless steel screws that are included in the BMS kit. Once I have all four pins out, I'm going to carefully fold the board down and release the connectors for the Tesla wiring. Both of these connectors have a small clip that needs to be pressed down. Hold the wires and push down on the release clip. Gently rock and pull on the connector until it pops out. And we can take the original Tesla BMS board and set it aside. We don't need it anymore. Now we can install the new Tesla Overkill Solar Interface Board. This board is for Revision B Tesla modules. Revision B has seven multicolored wires terminated in this one connector, while Revision C modules have two ribbon cables that plug into the Revision C adapter board. Now we can install the new interface board. I'm going to start by plugging in both temperature sensor wires from the new BMS kit. Next, plug in the Tesla temperature sensor connector. Push firmly until it locks. Then plug in the balance wire connector. Again, push firmly until it clicks. Now I'm ready to attach the new circuit board to the Tesla module. I'm going to use the new screws that came in the BMS kit. You can also use your old plastic clips if you prefer. Next up, we'll repeat this process on a Revision C Tesla module. This is a Revision C Tesla module. The only major difference is in the balance wire connections. There are two connectors that we need to unplug before removing the board. I'm starting with the seven pin connector on the top. These are connected with a fragile ribbon cable, so you need to very carefully use a tool like these meter probes and pry the connector straight up out of its housing. After it's loose, you don't want to mess with it too much because the ribbon is fragile. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the five pin connector on the bottom. Pry it straight down out of its housing. Now that I have both ribbon cables loose, I can remove the circuit board. These are the same plastic pins that retain the Revision B boards. Now I will unplug the temperature sensor connector. Hold the wires and push down on the release clip. Gently rock and pull on the connector until it pops out. Now we can set this old board aside. Now we can install the Revision C interface board. First, plug in both temperature sensor wires from the new BMS kit. We have modified the board since filming this segment, and the two BMS temperature connectors are now on the back side of the board. We did this just because it looks better. Plug in the Tesla temperature sensor connector. Push firmly until it locks. Now attach the new circuit board to the Tesla module. I'm using the new screws that came in the BMS kit. You can also use your old plastic pins if you prefer. Carefully plug in the ribbon cables. They push straight into the connectors. First, line up the seven pin connector on the top and push it straight down until it locks in place. Then carefully line up the five pin connector on the bottom and push it straight up until it locks as well. 
pinch the cables together to make sure they're fully seated. Now remove the terminal bolts with a 13 millimeter socket. From this point on, the procedure is the same for revision B or C modules. When you're working with the module with no covers on, you have to keep your metal tools away from these bus plates on the top and bottom of the module. These plates are always live. They're connected directly to all the cells in the module. So if you were to set a metal tool on top of the battery right now, it would short out some cells, probably causing a fire. Always be aware of where the live parts of the battery are and keep your tools away. Now that I have the terminal bolts out, I'm going to clean the terminals with some brake cleaner or lacquer thinner. Some of the terminals have this waxy gunk on them that could interfere with the new connections. Now it's time to check the health of the battery with our multimeter. I have it turned on to the medium DC volt setting. First check the voltage between the two main terminals on the Tesla module. We can see that negative is on the left and positive is on the right. We have 24 volts for the module. Now I'm going to check the voltage of each cell group individually, starting with the negative probe on BC0 and the positive probe on the BC1 test point, and the meter reads 3.9 volts. Now I'm going to check the next cell between BC1 and BC2, and again we see 3.9 volts. Moving on to cell number 3, 3.9 volts, cell number 4, 3.9 volts, cell number 5, 3.9 volts, and cell number 6, also 3.9 volts. We can also check the total voltage again between the BC0 and BC6 test points, and again the meter reads 24 volts. This shows that we have the interface board connected correctly, and all the balance wires are intact, and all the cells are healthy. If any of your cells measured below 2.5 volts, or if any of the cells were significantly different from the others, you should stop and not use that battery module, as it might have internal damage. We can also check the temperature sensors. Switch your multimeter to the resistance setting. Check the resistance of each sensor with the meter. Each sensor should read 10 kilo ohms at room temperature. These ones are reading 12k ohms because it's a little chilly in our shop today. Now that we know that all the cells are healthy and both temperature sensors are reading correctly via the test points, we can move on to the BMS installation. Before working with the BMS, reinstall the clear plastic covers on the battery module. I'm using Kapton tape to secure the covers, but clear packing tape will also work. I'm attaching the BMS to the top cover with two pieces of double-sided foam tape. This is optional and you can mount the BMS wherever you want. The kit also includes a 3-foot zip tie that you can use to secure the BMS to the battery module. Now that the BMS is in place, the first thing I'm going to do is attach the blue B-minus wires to the negative terminal on the battery module. Tighten the terminal bolts to about 20 foot-pounds. Now that the B-minus wire is installed, I'm using blue torque seal paint to cover the bolt so that I know in the future to never connect anything else to this connection. If you don't have torque seal paint, I suggest using a piece of blue tape to cover the connection. The tape serves as a reminder to never connect anything else at this terminal, because doing so would bypass the BMS. Now plug in the two jumper wires for the temperature sensors. If your BMS came with temperature probes installed, unplug them first. Now plug in the balance wires. Both ends of this cable are the same. One end plugs into the new interface board, and the other end plugs into the BMS. One side of the plug has two tabs that line up with two notches on the connector body. Line up the tabs and push the plug straight in. Just make sure the connectors line up straight and push them firmly. Sometimes they're very stiff when they come out of the box. That's all we need to do to hook up the BMS. The Bluetooth module already comes plugged in. Now I'm going to attach the red wire that's included in the BMS kit from Overkill Solar. From this point, we need to pay attention to the ends of these wires because they're now live. The BMS will shut off if they touch, but a short circuit like that might destroy the BMS. For now I'm going to cover the loose ends with a piece of tape. I'm going to use the other original bolt to attach the red wire to the positive terminal of the module. Tighten the terminal bolts to about 20 foot-pounds. 
Now that the BMS retrofit kit is installed on the Tesla module, we can hook this up to an inverter and do a load test. When I connect the second cable to the inverter, it will probably spark due to the capacitor inrush current. You can use a light bulb or resistor to pre-charge the inverter if you want, but today I'm just going to let it spark. I'm using a 500 watt light and a 1200 watt heat gun to load the inverter. At this point, we can use the Overkill Solar Mobile app to monitor the load test. We can see on the Overkill Solar app that the battery is just charging at 23.5 amps and 23.5 volts for a total of 550 watts. I'll turn on the heat gun for an additional load and now the battery is discharging at about 80 amps for a total of 1800 watts. The BMS is rated for 100 amps continuously so it has no problem with this load. The temperature sensors are also reading normally. Thank you for watching this instructional video. You can purchase the BMS kit at overkillsolar.com.